Hi, welcome to the presentation Just to Git. Um, this presentation was thought of as a kind of interactive session with a lot of fun and I was hoping to have some interaction with the audience. Not gonna happen, I'm afraid, with this setup that we currently have with uh, having this all pre-recorded. It's not like you can really take part in this. Uh, but I hope it will still be fun for you and you will get some nice uh, uh, knowledge about Git from it. So let's get into the action. Uh, whole event wouldn't be possible with the wonderful sponsors. We don't meet in person, but still there are a lot of people that ha were involved in the preparation of that. So we should be thankful to the people that were made it possible in the first place. Uh, agenda for today. First, I will try to show you something more that you normally learn about the Git when you first start with it. Uh, usually, you just stop at the three, four commands. So you will be uh, learned how to push, pull, commit, add files, and that's usually where you when people stop. I will try to show you some more things that you can do with Git that make it even more reliable and uh, pleasant tool for you. Um, then I will show you some cool tools and in order to work with the Git, the things that I actually use every day. And lastly, I will just show you some tips and tricks that might help you uh, become even more productive with Git. Uh, so the problem with the Git is that it's so different from actual PowerShell uh, that people very often just find themselves that they will just begin with uh, they will begin with uh, with just just this basic knowledge about the PowerShell and then they are introducing to Git and because the syntax is so different and everything is so different about it they will just basically uh, follow this uh, uh, paradigm that you just do things and if something doesn't go your way you just delete everything move the file somewhere else hopefully not in that direction and, and then you start over. What I will try to do today is I will try to show you how you can avoid it uh, and how you can actually use Git more effectively. Um, so let's just jump into demos. Summary will come obviously later. Uh, I prepared a few demos for you and um, I will try to show you some basic concepts that I think are very important if you want to work with Git. Uh, so first concept uh, is branches. Git will Git is one of those uh, uh, tools for maintaining a code where branching works very well and is very helpful. So what I would like to encourage you to do is to use branches every time you put any code in your repo. Um, so let's say in if I want to see my branches, I will run git branch and as you can see here, I have two separate branches. I have git first and have git second and I can change between those branches and see the code that is actually in there. Uh, so in first, if I uh, check the content of the readme, I have something that was added on the first branch. And if I then check out the second branch, I will see the content of readme that's slightly uh, different uh, and that way you can uh, put the code in kind of separate container uh, and branching generally works fine in any tool that you will find what doesn't work very well in those other tools usually is merging multiple branches into one branch because whenever a conflict happens or there are some things that need to be taken into account or sometimes even performance is, is suffering from, from the, the fact when you merge the branches this is definitely not the case with the Git so that's why it's it's super important to use, use uh, Git like that with the branches. Um, another thing that you should take to, into account when you work with Git is uh, pull requests. Basically what it allows you to do, let's go back here to my dashboard. You can see I created multiple uh, repos for the purpose of this presentation. 
let's go to dame demo one one which is exactly what we just saw so as you can see here i have two separate pull requests from from the changes from the second one from the first so because of use of the branches this code, code can be merged into separate steps it can be uh, kind of isolated through the whole process uh, until it's eventually landing in the master and what people what we would normally do is treat master as your production code and anything that happens to be on the branch that it's not in the master or production or whatever you want to call it is considered to be work in progress or something that may change in the future so that allows you to kind of make sure that whatever is in the production is keep kept in the uh, very uh, special in the special master branch or any other branch that you choose and the code that you are working on that is not yet ready so let's say you just uh, created function but you didn't really make it proper you didn't have a parameters that you wanted you just started with just maybe help for it or you just started with parameters but you didn't have help uh, this kind of work in progress code you can always put on your branch you can push it and you should do that as, as often as possible to avoid losing your work and the moment you do that uh, you uh, your code is basically uh, safe and it's not really affecting production because that will happen later when you will merge your branch into master so um, this is what I wanted to show you in this demo so branching is, is very useful uh, let's go to other demo um, by the way, I'll try to make it as close to the live uh, uh, presentation as possible, so I will not take too many takes. And if you look at my clock at the right hand side, you will probably notice that it's pretty late and I'm doing things last minute. This is typical of me, so I really don't have time to make too many re-recording re 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 of this. So hopefully it will go relatively smooth and if it's not it's not going smooth well you almost will feel like you are attending a live session because it's going to be as bad as possible during those kind of setups okay um so i might mention branches so let's see what branches you have here um i think i accidentally created one of the branches here so i have one branch that is merged and one that is conflicted so this is what was shown in the previous slide where I mentioned, okay, you very often will find yourself in a situation that um, you have two branches, you work on them, and then when conflict happens, this is something that very often throws people off, uh, you basically stop, you don't use get, you just, just put the files on the side, um, you check uh, check out the master branch, create new branch for yourself that is not conflicted in, anymore because it's fresh. You copy your changes over back to the, 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 the branch that you just created. It's not ideal and it's not recommended and I definitely would not recommend to take that approach. Um, so when you have a conflict, you basically have two choices. First of all, you can always do rebase. Uh, git rebase is when you have branch that it's taken from master and then you change master and then you say okay i don't want it to start in this place i will move it over here uh, basically what you do then is you rewrite your history uh, which is something that's kind of itchy for me i come from the communist country where rewriting history was kind of habit of the government so i don't like rewriting history so much so what i what i prefer is to merge master into my current branch the problem when you take that approach for is that you have to make sure that the first thing of the master is is exactly what is is on the remote so here if i look at my repo let just let me just show you very quick so if i go to demo 102 and i check the pull request i have here it will tell me that this pull request cannot be merged because it's in the conflict but if i go here and i uh, take a look at the master so let's just see uh, let's see all of them i have my local master which is just current master but it's also you can see there's remote master but that one states it's just first commit if i look at the master 
on and the actual remote and I go here branch master let's see uh, let's see all the, the commits so um, yeah, doo -doo -doo -doo. you can see here I have three commits not just one and the f this first commit is still there obviously but I also have uh, oopsie and this merge uh, commit so there is a difference so if I would say now uh, on the conflict branch and I say git merge origin master it's uh, already up to date but wait a minute that's not what I see on the other side well you have to remember that what you see here as a remote it's kind of cached version of your remote git was designed for uh, use um, in the offline world in situation where you would have uh, very often you will find yourself very often not connected to the internet this is not the world we live in in currently uh, most of people have a uh, very good connection internet connection at home you very often have a uh, very good connection of your mobile phone as well so you can just just well basically connect to the internet everywhere uh, but uh, when the git was kind of forming it wasn't always the case and also you want to be able to work in situations where uh, internet connection may be not even possible let's say you are on the flight where you don't have wi-fi or something like that and you are actually following the instructions to turn off your phone and put it in the flight mode uh, well then then you won't be able to do anything with remote because it's not accessible so to make the the git still perform well it's kind of showing you that it's remote but it's not really remote remote it's just remote cached version of it so how do you get the actual remote well that's what the fetch command is for and if i say git fetch and now you can see that master shifted from this commit to that the um, branches right now I c you can see that master is currently on this merged uh, stage so if i would just now git merge git merge origin master like i did before now it will just show me the actual conflict and now what i can actually do is fix the conflict okay okay let's move to the next demo and here i wanted to show you uh, something that may happen to you eventually um, let's say that you were working on your code um, and you even created the pull request for your code so let's go here I have my demo 020103 03, and uh, here I have my pull request which is just updating readme right so yeah, it's perfectly fine somebody was maybe even reviewing this code uh, and was perfectly happy with it and then you are asked to okay we need to add this test module to this repo could you please do that and you were just very enthusiastic about it and you decided okay let's just create the code you, you put the code and then you just just push it and then all of a sudden you find yourself that in the situation where your pull request actually changed it's like uh, wait a minute that should not be mendled with each other i just wanted to keep the readme changes separate from the changes that i did to the module well but that's not what you told to get to do uh okay but how to fix that because let's say you do want to fix that so first of all what you can do in git a uh, very useful tool for that kind of situation is cherry pick cherry pick allows you to go to some another branch and pick the commit that you wanted to take from the other one so let's just see git log for the uh, branch uh, some work and see what the commits we have there so adding tense modules you can see have this commit id so what i can do now is just to git cherry pick and i can specify this commit id um, and now I can just push it, right? Because now if I take a lo look at my log for this branch, you can see I have first commit and I have adding my test module. So now I can just push that one. 
and we'll arrive to uh, to the repo. We'll create another branch for it. And um, okay, but what should I do with the other branch where I don't want my work that was just modified? So if I check out the um, check out some work. Um, so now if I look at my history, I have those two commits. Well, the second commit should not be here. So let's just git reset, which allows you to kind of go back in time, remove things to things. I want to go back this one commit and I don't want that one to happen. So let's just clean that one. And now because um, now my branch doesn't agree with the branch that I see here, because that one is un unaware of my changes, I have to git push minus force. So I have to force this kind of going back in time, and if I revert, re 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 reset this, uh, refresh that one, as you can see, I'm back in the situation where I just had this first commit, and my all the changes that should be actually on that on the branch are on this branch, another branch indeed. Um, so this is uh, kind of basic things you can do with Git to kind of make you uh, uh, more um, able to get away from situations like conflicts and stuff like that. Uh, now I want to show you some, something a little bit more advanced than what we just saw. So first concept I would like you to show you is to uh, understand the relation between your current uh, branch that is sitting on your desk and the branches that are in the remote repo. So in this repo I have two branches, test1 and test2, and if I check out test1, you can see it says your branch is ahead of origin master. Uh, origin test one, sorry, um, which means that I added some code to this branch, but my remote branch is completely unaware of that. So what should I do now? Well, now it means that I should push. If I push and I do git status again, so I want to check what the status of my branch is. As you can see, uh, my branch is up to date with origin test one. So they both agree on, on what the code looks like. If I git checkout test two, on the other hand, that one will actually tell me that my branch is behind origin test two. What does that mean? Well, uh, in situation where multiple people work on a certain branch, or you maybe just uh, work on multiple computers, you may find yourself in a situation where a certain branch is uh, on your computer, on your local computer, is behind the one on remote which means that basically somebody changed the code uh, on the remote. It can happen to obviously to things like master where you just merge all the things and then your master can be become behind the master on the remote. So what you should do then? Well, if you push to fix uh, the being ahead, when you are behind, well, you will just pull. And once you pull, you see your changes. And again, if you just run git status, you will see that you are up to date with origin. So this is uh, very important to understand when you are working with the branches. Uh, you may find yourself in either of the two situations. So when you are slightly ahead or a little behind, or you can actually be both. You can have uh, especially when you don't pay attention, you may find yourself in a situation where you're both behind and ahead. When it will happen? Well, um, simply put, if you, um, let's say, change branch on one computer, then just jump to an another one and start working on something else, um, you might end up with uh, some changes on one, some on the other. But because of the commit uh, uh, history and everything like that, Unless you ch were changing the same things on both uh, computers, you are pretty easy to, you can just, just first pull to make sure that you have everything that was changed on the remote, and then you can push, and basically all becomes in sync. Um, the problem appears when you have actual conflict on this, um, but uh, then usually 
the best approach is just to make sure that you solve the conflicts locally and just, just push minus F to make sure that the remote branch is actually agreeing with you what, what should be in the branch. Okay, so this is uh, um, the explanation for being ahead and behind. The, sec the next thing, the more advanced that I wanted to show you, so let's go back up. Let's go to demo oh, two, two. And here, what I wanted to show you is a situation when you are actually in conflict already. So if I run git status here, I see that both modified readme MD. And now if I open readme MD, I'm using code because that is that tool has very nice functionality when it comes to uh, resolving the conflicts. I can see that I have some very important code here and I added something. And let's say I want to resolve conflict by picking up the things from the master. So I'm accepting incoming change, I'm saving it, I'm adding the file, all looks good. Uh, sorry, git add, obviously I want to add readme. And now I say commit, uh, git commit, minus minus, no edit because I don't want to change the commit message, so I want to keep it as a merged uh, merge, uh, message. And then I look at my code, I say, can't read me, and I'm stunned. I had very important code there, and now it's all gone. I look at the log, and I had some conflict, okay, but where's my code? It's all gone. Well, not really. So, um, Git is smart enough to keep certain points in time for your convenience. Uh, so, if you find yourself in a situation where you perform something, something that could potentially uh, overwrite your code or remove it, like merging or pooling, all those kind of big uh, uh, steps in the Git history, you can always reset to something called Origic. Origic. Orig head and if I look at my code right now it's get diff as you can see now I have my some very important code back so this is a very easy way to kind of address issue where you were just in the middle of resolving conflicts and you were in a hurry and then all of a sudden you find yourself with the uh, code that doesn't work, for example, because you remove certain lines and you have no idea why it doesn't work and you want to go back in time and start over. Well, this is where uh, Origic, Origic hat is. It, that's what Origic hat is for. You can always re revert uh, your state to, to what it was before without actually messing up your code entirely. So remember, if you find yourself in a situation where your merge went really in the wrong direction, when you find yourself in a situation where you really want to go uh, to the stage where uh, nothing is broken again, then uh, Auric Hat is definitely going to help you avoid situations where you are kind of stuck and you, or actually not stuck, or you, you just find yourself just removing the code that you were hard working hard on. Okay. Let's see. Not a demo. Um, uh, so here I want to sh show you a really nice feature. Uh, so basically I was working on the code and I was working on my function and I added the help for it because I wanted to make sure that I have help. And then I started working on this internal code that I started, but it's not really finished. Um, and now I find myself in a situation where I actually want to make sure that the help is actually already somebody can review it, approve it, and merge it. Uh, but I don't want to have these other changes to be applied. So what I can do? I mean, uh, everybody knows that if you changed uh, multiple files, sorry, 
if, I, if, if you know you know that if you change multiple files it's pretty easy to say okay I want to add just that file or this file but here actually all the changes are in the same file um, so what next what should I do um, so this is where the uh, patching is very useful uh, I, and I will show you on, on this example how you can actually do uh, commit only certain changes in your files without actually changing the whole file uh, as you go so the way to do that let's just first uh, uh, see the branches that we have so I created two branches in this repo um, I have function body this is where I want to put all these thing changes to the body of the function and comment based help current one that I am on that I want to just add comment based help so the co comment to do that is still it's uh, surprisingly it's not git add it's git commit git commit when you specify the message so I'm adding comment based help uh, so now I have to specify how I want to commit it and the switch I need to do uh, used here is minus p which stands for patch if I do it like this and the file is not very large it will immediately show me okay this is your uh, a hunk that's how the, 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 the git is referring to the parts of the code that you changed do you want to add it so in this case it doesn't work for me because that's that hunk is too big for me I don't want to add all of that so what I can do here uh, is I can split it running command s and uh, now I split it into two, three hunks the first one is just uh, the, the, the uh, help for the whole function with synopsis description and example so yes indeed I want to add that one then I have my parameter help yes that one definitely goes here and last but not least I have this uh, body changes and that one I don't want to keep that one uh, in this in this commit so I just say no and if I check diff now it will tell me that only changes to the body are kept so now I can just just uh, uh, git push and now the remote has this comment based help I can go here to my repo 203 now I have two branches so I can go to this branch comment based help and create the pull request for it and if you look at the files that were changed here it's only the it's the, the this this module uh, module uh, file but only the changes to the help are included um, if I go back to my to my git and just to get check out the other one so the what was it function function body and now um, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, I think I messed it up a little bit so let's just get check out master you local changes okay um let's just get stash it and see what happened so let's get check out the um function body by the way stash is another command that you may find useful so whenever uh, git will yell at you that you have some changes that will be kind of overwritten by your checkout you can always uh, git checkout uh, and I think in this case it was actually expecting that the files that, that were changed will be deleted so if I look right now in this uh, common base help uh, sorry if I git checkout um, function body I should be able to do that now and I check what is in there. Actually, no, the test module is still there, so we can now uh, I can see stash pop finish finishing up the, the, the thought. So whenever you have the situation where um, changing to between branches would override the code or just just make it a mess, uh, the kit will not allow you to do that. Um, and then stash, which is it's kind of like a um, stack of code that you want to keep, is very useful. You can just git stash your code. And then check to uh, change to another branch and get, get stash pop and that will actually um, take the changes that you had and if I do git diff now you will see that it actually added just my body I'm not sure why it was complaining about it because well it's exactly what I wanted but now I just can git commit again and I can either do that with um, 
adding body so I can do it uh, with the patch again but in this case I just want to add all of that so I can just instead use minus a which will just add all the changes that are currently uh, in all the files that were already added to the repo it will not add files that were not previously uh, introduced to the, the index and now if I just uh, put that one in the repo you will see that now I have another branch on the remote which will allow me again to create uh, pull requests from it but now the, the pull request will be uh, pull request will just concern the body of the function it will not include the changes to uh, help so I create this new pull request oh sorry actually I think I changed check the wrong branch let's go back because that one already have the, the um, pull request ready for it uh, so let's just create pull request from this one okay function body new pull request and now as I mentioned only the changes to the body will be included and the pull request and I have two separate pull requests and uh, in the well and if it, it actually would happen simultaneously it doesn't make any sense to separate them maybe but in let's say I just started with this uh, adding body and I want to um, well it's kind of work in progress I don't want to merge it just yet uh, then I can still uh, apply the changes that I want to apply right away so all the changes to the help will actually be already can be already merged so if I look at my pull request here well yeah, I guess I didn't create the other one just yet I just started doing that so let's go back here and actually create this pull request common base help and uh, let's create this pull request um, so now I should have two pull requests and because my help is prepared already it has all the things that I want in there I can just merge that one and not have uh, to worry about all the code that I changed on the uh, on the other branch because that one is well not ready so I don't want to uh, fiddle with that one um, so this is kind of uh, this uh, git 102 so not just basic information how you get pull git push I assume that this is something you're already familiar with. Uh, if, if not, um, please make sure that you at least get that uh, um, in your head. Uh, now I want to show you some tooling. You probably saw some, some of that, but let me show you some tooling I use daily to make my um, experience with Git slightly less, um, well, terrifying. Let's put it like that. Uh, so first of all, there are a few nice modules that will help you work with Git. Uh, so let's just say Git module. Let's see what the modules I have loaded right now. Uh, so posh Git, you probably noticed that for most of the things right now, I can just tap complete a lot of things. This is where I actually uh, the functionality I have from posh git the ps git is used mainly in this part so I'm not sure if you notice that but whenever I change the branches so if I change the branch to uh, common base help uh, my prompt is changing uh, and this one is actually coming from another module get module um, power line so power line is very useful uh, module that allows you to prepare that kind of uh, neat f uh, prompts uh, in the console and as you can see I'm able here to see on which branch I am so if I change to some file so let's say I will remove for example module manifest from my test module it will show me that I removed some file if I um, uh, if I create another file uh, it will show it as uh, well not yet staged if I add it it will show that it's uh, I added file removed file if I modify file it will also show it so all this feedback I get right away I can by sitting here I can immediately see what's going on and if we go back to 
um, demo, I think it was O, sorry, demo O, 103. Um, maybe it was 0201. Uh, here we had this this being ahead and behind. Uh, so if I am ahead and behind, it will also show me this information and this prompt. So I can actually very easily uh, figure out what uh, what is broken. So the modules that I would recommend to use with uh, with uh, the uh, if you are working with Git very frequently is PostGit and PSGit, and on top of that, uh, um, uh, Powerline in order to make your uh, make your prompt really uh, um, giving you extra feedback on what's going on with your Git repo, where are you, what should you do, do you have to push, do you have to pull, um, do you have to add some files or maybe there is some dev that you want to see. So all those things will be provided to you. Um, another very important thing that you might want to configure is to configure the editor for your Git by default is VI and people that are used to um, uh, used to, to, to just, just, just Windows and PowerShell in general are not very uh, well I would say that they don't really appreciate VI so much so let's just verify very quick let's say I want to git commit so let's just add something and add that one and now if I do git commit uh, as you can see here, I just got, got Notepad++, which is convenient because that's a editor we are familiar with, saving, and then if I uh, just close the file, it will just make it uh, this, with this commit message. How do you configure that? Well, git config is your friend, and so um, Notepad++ is my uh, default editor right now, and uh, the installation of git these days allows you to choose that you want to use something like Notepad and well wh where would you configure it otherwise well then git config is your friend uh, here as you can see uh, I have it configured on the system which means it's for everything that's happening on this box for all the users the different level that you would probably want to configure it for yourself if you don't really if you are not admin, you can just use git config minus global, which is not global as like for everybody, it's global for you in all the repos. And then you can just specify the this configuration there. Uh, so basically what you can do is just set the score editor to something that you are familiar with. If I would not have it, I would just get VI instead. I'm pretty confident to use uh, VI myself, but yeah, I know that it's not really knowledge that, that uh, most of the Windows administrators uh, share. Um, so this is uh, the, the editor uh, that you want to probably configure. One more thing that I, I already showed you before is that uh, if you have a conflict, well, what's very useful is to use uh, VS Code. I don't use VS Code daily for editing PowerShell scripts so much, but whenever I face the conflict, I, I, I uh, really uh, appreciate all the feedback that uh, code can give you. So to demonstrate this uh, code feature, let's go back to the branch where we actually had a conflict. So let me open the file that actually has the conflict right now. And as you can see here, I ha can have different options. I can have accept current change so that will take whatever I did. Um, accept incoming change what we did before and we didn't like it because we deleted the, file, the uh, content of it but we can just say accept both changes and then we have uh, both the, of those things in there so it allows you to pretty easily resolve the conflicts when they happen you don't have to um, worry about all those uh, triangles uh, removing them later because that will be done for you with the, uh, by, the, by the editor itself um, there are other editors that help you kind of resolve the conflicts like that, uh, but I find myself very um, um, uh, happy with how the VS Code is actually performing that operation. Um, so even though I'm not using VS Code for um, as my primary editor whenever I have a conflict, I would probably uh, go back to it. And as you know, VS Code is kind of uh, de facto becoming a standard editor for PowerShell. 
so having those this functionality built in is definitely a huge advantage of uh, using this editor for editing any code in PowerShell. So yeah, I can on only recommend that one for anybody who maybe doesn't uh, enjoy working with ISC on have or have conflicts on a daily basis which well if you work with git and and the powershell is not uncommon and not ahead of so this is the tools that i wanted to show you and now i'm going to show you uh, some tricks that will maybe make you even more productive with powershell i kind of hinted that a few times already um, so the first one I want to show you is uh, what I decided uh, early on when I uh, was working with Git myself uh, every day is that I generally enjoy uh, not typing too much and I'm awful typer so uh, I make a lot of typos so uh, one of the things that you can definitely do is um, that Git is trying to be helpful, right? So if you say git def, um, sorry, let's just try something different. It will, uh, the git will kind of suggest the options that you have, which is useful. Uh, but if let's say you make this type of very often, you can actually um, do something different. You can say, um, you can configure uh, Git in a way that it will actually wait for a short period of time of your choosing, and then it will actually perform the action for you. How to configure that? Well, if I look at my uh, config, this one is actually related to autocorrect. So let's just look for so something that looks like autocorrect. And as you can see, I have it configured to 10. If you remember, uh, my response was within one second. So it's 10th of the second that you specify here. So if you want to change this option, you would specify whatever you want, want to have there. And that means that if you run the command and you make a typo, and um, it's uh, clear what you meant by that, it will run the command if it's still not sure because it's too uh, too many things that might match um, is it will give you still the list so you are not risking too much so the first thing help autocorrect that will allow you to uh, avoid situations where it will only proposal will happen and most of the time we will actually get commands proper next thing is something I do with my profile um, so um, used that few times already uh, not by thinking about it I just forgot that I should not show you that too early so whenever I have a um, alias git aliases are basically similar to aliases that we have in PowerShell the difference is that git alias actually allows you to specify something more than just the name of the command you can have the command with many many parameters which uh, saves you a lot of time on typing so if I have those aliases, I can run just uh, them as if they were PowerShell commands. So for what I can do is, for example, I have this uh, uh, alias for commit. I can do uh, something like that. And then it will know that I want to commit. But as you can see, this commit didn't work because I still have this conflict. So that's the way to... Uh, um, that way with this, this 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 trick I can actually uh, get more productive so I have things like uh, please that will show me div I have something like hide that will show me status I can do uh, git push with uh, kfangs uh, I can do uh, kfangs by if I want to uh, uh, push minus f all those things are possible because I have aliases and I, I kind of change the behavior of uh, the the response to the not found command so let me show you that very, very briefly so um, so the part I'm looking for is not found it's in my profile for all the users so profile current user all hosts First of all, hosts uh, for this user, and uh, let's say I want to see the context 
of this match I want to see just two lines above 20 below and here you can see I have this execution context invoke command and I'm basically saying okay if you find the alias just run this alias uh, with uh, the correct arguments that wherever I specified afterwards that's why even though I was just typing up awesome minus m it will still pass it to git commit because that's what all, all awesome stands for if I look at my git uh, config again where the, the alias are, are stored and I look for global minus l and I will just try to look for this awesome you will see the alias definition so it's just commit message but some of others are more uh, advanced they contain more uh, more uh, features more sorry more um, more elements of the command and that way I can just uh, make sure that the, my kit is always behaving the way I would like it to so this is the second uh, trick I wanted to show you and the third one that's also sometimes useful um, let me just show that for you on my block So, um, if you are familiar with the concept of auto hotkey, um, you probably know that uh, in the in the past you would be able to create some macros for a command line, um, but we still are able to do something similar in uh, the context of the PowerShell, which is just ps uh, uh, ps read line. So here I'm just defining a PS read line handler for certain uh, um, strings. So if I type something like co and space, it will just put the whole command for me. If I do something similar with add, I will just git add. If I do pu and space, I get git push. And you probably can guess that if I type git m uh, me and space it will just do git merge so this is very nice a way to uh, not only um, make the the comments work for you like i did with awesome but also make sure that if you put it uh, if you run it like this you get it in history so later you can just just find this command you don't have to um, look up for something that you don't may not remember how it was uh, phrased so if I just do r control R with git I get all the commands I did with git so maybe I will be able to find the one uh, that will be actually useful in the context that I'm running right now so if I go to git rest org hat I, I just maybe remember that was something with org uh, underscore and I can just find it very easily in my history if I would just have it with this uh, um, uh, awesome I won't be av able to, to to basically find it easily because it won't uh, show the full length of the command that I wanted to run and this is basically what I wanted to show you so let's go back to the slideshow so uh, what I wanted to for you to take away from this session is first of all that git doesn't have to be as scary as some people may see it right now uh, there are a lot of things that may help you be more productive with it. Um, there are some useful, uh, uh, some tools that will help you tame this beast uh, and will help you become more productive if you use them properly. And uh, well, very often you will find yourself in a situation where you say, okay, Google, Google the problem, Google that problem, Google this problem. Uh, my main uh, uh, problem with uh, Git is that very often you will need to know something first uh, um, in order to uh, find information for it. So um, I would strongly recommend you to first uh, use not only use Git but also get some uh, maybe some some documentation, some books in order to understand the basics of Git. Uh, because then finding the solution for your problem will be way easier and you don't have to memorize all those commands that are useful in those in the context of the situation that you are in but you can always go back to what you kind of have in the back of your head uh, by googling it or by looking at the git uh, help the problem with the git help is that if you don't 
sure what you are looking for, uh, you won't be able to uh, find the solution for your problem. Um, as usual, you will find the slides and demo uh, in the GitHub repo. So as you can see, we're also using Git here. Uh, and uh, uh, with that, I would like to thank you and I hope to see you next year uh, in person. And let's hope that this time it won't have to be uh, it will be possible to have those interactive uh, session. I really strongly regret regret that this one isn't really recorded and, and not in the front of light audience because I was really hoping for a lot of questions not really possible in this setup like this. But thank you in, uh, anyway for watching this uh, presentation and see you next time.